And welcome, welcome everybody to the Hoop and the Harm. I am Ethan Zeltner, and I am here with Elvin Mims. What's going on, Ethan? All right, so let's start off with the uh, London Lightning winning their third championship on Monday. That was awesome. I was at the game. Thanks for the tickets. Uh, no problem. Uh, Ryan Anderson won the playoff MVP or finals MVP? How does that work? Um, yeah, you get the best playoff finals MVP. Um, yeah, big shout out to Ryan Anderson for that. Best performer? Yeah. It was a great atmosphere, but uh, one thing I noticed from other games that I've went to, um, other games that I've went to usually tend to fall during the Christmas holidays, like around January-ish, and the Upper Bowl was always full, or damn near full. This game, the Upper Bowl was all blocked off, blocked off. Is that because it was just on a Monday, or how's that go? No, I don't even really think it was because of a Monday, because I've seen the place sold out on Wednesday, Thursday nights. Um, I think it's like, um, I said, it's... Canadians, man. Y'all are serious about y'all warm weather, right? So it's, <laughs> it's 14 just, degrees. Yeah, I get the shorts, man. Yeah, I think it, it's a lot of that, that right? You know, you, you kind of wear it. And you're going to own the only ones you're going to really have there are the diehard fans, the one that's been there, you know, from game one to the last game. And, you know, they want to come out and, and cheer and root for everything. So um, I think that, you know, the people that come, you know, on and off, you know, they see a nice sunny day, good weather outside, you know, there's no one trying to just be out, you know, and, and just doing things outside. So. True, true. Uh, I guess that's how it goes. But um, I was just wondering what your thoughts are on the rule change the MBLC is looking to potentially do. I don't know if this is a thing or not yet, but what they're impo implying is they want to have it so if a Canadian player gets hurt, they want to have it so another Canadian player must replace that same player. I personally don't know if that's going to work. I like it because, hey, I might get a call up from the men's league, so who the hell knows, right? <laughs> no, I mean, it's, 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 it's to the point where it's, um, even though you have a Canadian go out and they say, you know, we have to, you know, replace them with another Canadian, doesn't mean that there's not any legit Canadian basketball players. I mean, you know, I've been in the general manager office before I've been in the coach's office. And I just, <coughs> you know, they get email after email after phone call after phone call. And it's like, oh, my. Video all highlight day, package of all package. day from agents, you know, trying to fit. So it's not a shortage of players for them. You know, they they have just finding the right one pot to pull up on. So if they want a Canadian, I'm pretty sure they can contact an agent that that's been trying to push and trying to push and trying to push to get his, you know, the guys representing on, and just let them know like, look, this is the situation. You know, we have a Canadian and we want to bring him in as you know, kind of like a, a you know, what the what would you call it? Uh, a designated, was it or like a ten-day like contract? Yeah, kind of like a designated player. We know he's not guaranteed the season. He'll come in until this player's ready to go. And then That'd be interesting. Ready to go, you know, you know, kind of gives him, of course, have to release him. But yeah. All right. Well, that's not a bad idea. I just, I don't know. I'm hoping they just have a good enough pool to draw from. Because I remember you and I were talking about how the Montreal team is a, was an example of that. Yeah. This is, um, yeah, with the pool, like I said, you know, they have, you know, they have more than. You know, they have to go and get another Canadian player. They, they have more than that. That won't be a problem. Um, but, you know, they I think when I first came in, it was two Canadians per team. And mm -hmm. now they yeah, yeah, it was three, and then this past year it was four. And I think next year they're going to be five. You think five is a good number? Um, I mean, considering next year you only have 12 players on the team. And, you know, you have can't have Canadians. 15, though. No, you don't have 15. You have 12 players on the team. So, it, um, you know, it's, it's going to be... It's going to be interesting to see how it happens. I mean, basketball is really evolving here over the past couple of years here in Canada. So, I mean, it's not, I'm not going to say there's no talent here. There's no, you know, good basketball players like I've seen play. I played against a lot of good basketball players up in Canada. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just it's going to be real interesting to see, you know, how that format goes because, I mean, I'm not trying to put it on a pedestal or not, but, you know, basketball here compared to, I mean, who knows? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a game that, that, like I said, is catching on and caught on real quick here in Canada, and it's evolving, you know. Um, that's the beauty of it, right? I mean, there's no joke when they say basketball is a global sport, you know. So 
Well, the registration has been up the past three years compared to hockey and football. And I think football, just because parents see what can happen to the players in the long term, and I think hockey is just going down just solely on the fact of the cost. I think it's expensive. That's why my parents didn't really want us to play hockey. They're like, holy crap, there's a lot of money. Yeah, I've heard of, you know, hockey is by far one of the most expensive. You know, it's expensive. Yeah. And all that stuff. I mean, but, you know, You see a whole lot more brutal injuries on a basketball court than you know, yeah, it's it's just just football is just more, you know, a guy running the ball, humping around full speed and trying to get him. True. So it's like every time somebody do that, everybody kind of like grimace. But you saw if you get hit, you go down and you stay down, you know, everybody's just like, oh, he's okay until they see, you know, EMT and, you know, ambulance coming out and then coming out with a stretch and now everybody's on the edge of their seat. Yeah. Basketball is just instant. You a guy's running, it. You see it. he get ready to take off and jump, he comes down and it's like, wow, it happens. And there's no pad, and there's you see no his face too, yeah. yeah, you can see him, like, no helmet covering his face, you can see the pain on his face, you can hear the screaming, you can, you know what I'm saying? So you, it's like right there, you know, and it's, you know, but, um, yeah, like, it's just, I think it's, um, with that, I would say, I think it's due to the fact that the game is just evolving, right? Kids are being exposed to it at a much younger age and kind of taking it more serious because, I mean, y'all have had a good, like, a good stack of players to, to come out and go make a name for themselves yeah. in the NBA. So kids are like, hey, you know, it's possible. You know, like, well, you and I were talking about it. The starting lineup potentially could be for a Canadian roster would be Corey Joseph, Nick Stauskas, Andrew Wiggins, Kelly Olinick, and Tristan Thompson. Tristan Thompson. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. That's probably one of the better teams you've ever featured. I mean, <laughs> I remember when Rick Fox technically played for us. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's just, you know, but like I said, it's evolving, man. And then now y'all have it, uh, a kid that he actually did well for his rookie at Fine Nation. Um, he did okay, but he was a first 23 year old slash 19 year old. I mean, so, you know, he's a rookie right out of high school, you know, so he's never really had that, that, that experience, you know, other than traveling to play against all the high schools in the States. He never really had that collegiate experience and stuff like that. So I think he did okay. You know, he fit in a good system and knew how to use him well. So, I mean, he wasn't, I didn't think he was going to come out and just be a rookie of the year. But, I mean, I think that, he's got something to build I think up. they're pleased yeah. with him in True. Milwaukee. You know, they're, they're satisfied and they see up by him. And he was like, you know, just watching the interviews and stuff. He's saying like he doesn't mind working and being better. Well, another thing we're seeing in Canada, too, for taking basketball seriously, they're offering scholarships now, which is really cool. That's finally a, a big deal for the fact we can finally get big athletes to come here and to play for us and to do well. Yeah, but, I mean, it's, I, I used to go and, you know, kind of help out and, and shoot around and play at kind of a local college here. And, like, it, it was, it was mind-boggling to me because the players didn't get full rides. That's a hard selling point. That is it's a long, very yeah. hard selling point for you to say, you know what, leave, yes, leave the States, come here, we're not going to give you a full ride, you know, you're going to have to pay for this, you're going to have to pay for that, versus another college in the state, not as far, probably is a Still equal, the states, of yeah. equal status, if not more, and they're like, hey, you come here, you got your, your school and pay for your room and board, your meals paid for, we give you the gym, you know, you have all that. Plus, I was, you know, at the same college, they was like, the athletes, the student athletes, can't even use, like, they have to pay to use the workout facility. Yeah, they get a gym membership. I'm like, dude, really, like, this is your athletes. They're, like, representing your school, and you're making them pay, you know, for a gym membership at a gym that you have on campus to go work yeah, out. Yeah, like, full that, access. Uh, they should have full access, hands down, you know, like, you know, and, I mean, I was fortunate enough and granted the junior college that I went to and the university I went to, they had a workout facility just for the athletes. Like no no normal students or anybody could go in there. Or you have to be an athlete to be able to go in there. That's how it should be. Right? Like, yeah. And that's just, it was it was crazy when I heard that. Like I was really like waiting on them to start laughing and telling me it was jokes, <laughs> right? But they was like, no, nah, it's, it's like wow, how do you expect your program to get to the point to where you can, you know, rack up wins and use that as a selling point when, you know, if a player comes in and he want to hit the weight room twice a day or something to get He's got to wait for someone to, else to get off the bench. Yeah, he has to wait. And, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, yeah, and I think the other problem could be is you were talking about this, the high school level 
here compared to what it is in the States is a lot different. In the States, it's like head and shoulders. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> Even from the time that, you know, I come out, it's like, it's like they're, it's like they're farming, like they're growing these kids. <laughs> think about it, man. I mean, you have like, you know, you have kids like, think about it now, the kids that are going to be the top of high school basketball, the kids I am with. You know, he looks good. It's like 16, 17 years old, like 6, 7, he 6, looks 8, like, a man. like 2, 30. You, you know what I mean? You think about that, that's a sophomore, a junior, you know, still, he's, he's still growing. Still going to grow, you know what I'm saying? And, and he's solid, you know. It's nothing to walk in a gym to a high school game. And um, when you're at the high school game, you come in and you see a kid, you know, 6'9", six, 6'10", six, a point guard, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and they're like sophomores, you know, juniors in high school. So it's like real, you know. And so when I come here, I see that. Or whatever, it's, you know, it, it was just, I was kind of taken back by it a little bit, you know, because you see the kids and they, I mean, Nothing they can do about it. Yeah, there's like a like, huge formula that you guys exactly. have to follow for yeah. here. It's like, oh, we have a gym. Oh, okay, yeah, well, let's go work out then, I guess. Yeah, that's just like, here it's like you have a lot of gyms. And one thing that I, I had to give you, sin, or it was just still hard now to see the amount of gyms that y'all have here. But people want to use them. Like, they did not shoot <laughs> balls. Like, I'm like, dude, in the States, man, like, you do it, like, if you take, like, New York, uh, places like Texas, California, um, even Florida, Florida, where I'm from, man. Like, dude, we get a gym that we can go to That's and busy. go inside and hoop, man. That thing is busy, like around the clock, pretty much. You know, like you know, all well, the I remember you were telling me like, you'll have guys coming from after work in their work clothes dude, ready to like, play. I'm, like seriously, like when I was coming at that, we used to play like outside of a park, man. You would see guys coming up there, like you know, they work for like cable companies and coal companies. <laughs> Or, you know, working for a construction company, just keep like these dudes day. literally like come out and they, they like put on their tennis shoes with their work pants and take off their shirt and then like let's ball, you know. But go play for an hour. Yeah, shoot a couple, you know, it's like oh, black shit. dark outside when we get done. You know, and it's just like Damn. It just goes from that to it's like you know, you, I'm you sorry, go somewhere you can't and you come see, in it's a daycare today. Yeah, you see like all these gyms and the and the courts are just used for like everything but basketball. <laughs> they just got like hoops everywhere. You go oh, these people are renting it out for floor hockey. Yeah, they got floor hockey and then paddle ball and volleyball. And, and the floor sucks. You know, they playing, um, you know, like soccer on it. Well, when it's like open that. gym, it's all the little kids too, and you can't even do anything. You can't work on nothing. It's just a flood of 1,500 yeah, kids just yeah, sitting there so shooting at like, one net. Yeah, so it's just like, man, you know. Like, and uh, I want to segue here to a little bit back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, Tim and Sid from uh, Sportsnet. They're Canadian uh, broadcasters. They do a good job. They're okay. They were talking about how they were curious as to why Canadians don't support leagues like the NBL as much as they should, they think. And in my opinion, I think it starts with guys like them. I don't understand why they aren't breaking down NBL finals highlights or even showing them. Why was it, Why is it just happening this year? Why can't they throw them a bone and say, hey, this is a local team. Let's throw the highlights onto our reel. Screw it. I just think it's because it's new. Yeah. And it, it, it's new. And people say, you know, it's, it's six years in. But when you think about it. How and, many teams and, have been and, around? In the big picture of it all, how many, you know, how long the NBA has been around, how long the NHL, MLB has been around, how long the, the rap has been there for 20 years, you know, over well, 20 years. You have the Blue Jays has been there forever. You have since the, the 70s. What's the hockey team? Maple Leafs. They've been around ever. since 1900. So you have people that, you have people from knee high, you know, and then they grow up and their their parents and family took them, and then you know when they get to a certain age they take their kids and it just become like a thing. So of course when you introduce this something new, people are just kind of like ah, you know ah, and then eventually it makes a name for itself. It starts making like little segments on like you know Tim and Sid. So guess what they'll start doing come next year? They'll kind of probably key in on it. Hopefully, I really you know hope what I'm saying? And then once they do that, they start talking about it. Hey, man, y'all should check out, like, you know, even if it's like this, even if they say, you know, you should check out this game, they're airing it on YouTube because all the games are on YouTube. Yeah, or Facebook Live. You can, you can Live. find it on Facebook Live. You can find this link. People start watching. they like, you know, hey, because That's you think takes. about it, you get to go down. It'll, uh, I'm not really sure what the floor seats are, but you can go down and you can put your whole family on the floor at a professional game for a portion 
of what one ticket would cost for a Raptors. I game. was looking at a Raptors ticket this yeah. year. It was like fifteen hundred bucks yeah. to go see the Bobcats. Well, yeah, I you mean, know, on, the Bobcats on the floor seat, right? <laughs> like on the floor seat, and now you can turn around and uh, a husband can take his wife and three kids and put them on the floor for not even a hundred bucks, probably. You get what well, I'm saying? Well, yeah, and, twenty and, bucks can get you a really good yeah, seat. and they're like right there. You know, you right there. Yeah, the seats you got me were awesome. Yeah, I appreciate top that. Of professional athletes. You get what I'm saying? And so. That's why I think that thing, that is more of a family friend. Because now you think when you go to a professional game, if I took my son to the Raptors game and I bought a $50 seat, I'm in the nosebleed section. Like, he's like... And you're not going to be able to buy as much yeah, either. you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you get to go there and it's a good time to buy it. You know, people, mm-hmm. you have people that's like, I've never been to a basketball game. I went, I don't think I ever miss another one. You know, once they and get like, that And, like, you let your kids go down and have fun on the yeah, court, on too. On the court during halftime, they get to, you know, after the game, the players go out, they sign autographs, the players, the kids get to interact with them, take pictures and stuff like that, you know. So it gives you that chance to see, you know, to interact more, to, to, you know. And, and, to be around professional and, athletes, to, yeah. To be around, because at the end of the day, you know, you have a lot of people that don't understand and, and you hear it so many times, and you just laugh it off, right? They'd be like, oh, you know, leagues like that is just a bunch of wannabes who didn't make the NBA. Well, yeah. And it's just the like, NBA, and, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the NBA, it's the NBA. And I'm like, so what do you call the dude that's, you know, playing single A, double A, triple A baseball? You know what I'm saying? Practice teams. Those are French NFL. players. The same thing. Like, but the thing about it, you take these players, and you go out on a basketball court with them right now, you couldn't stay on the court with them. You know, mm-hmm. so you have to respect them as professionals. And Take it from my word, that. I've tried to play Elvin one on one. It did not go well. No, so I'm you, I mean, you that much. You just, you <laughs> but I think you know now that they've mentioned it, and the name is out there, and it's making a name for itself. Um, so they will be able to, uh, you know, probably tell people to link in, follow the website, see when games are. That would help a lot. People see it, you know, and they like, you know what, you know, there's a team here. Let's go check the game out. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to pre-order tickets online. You can buy them right there at the game. You know, and it's right there. It's a good environment. It's not, you know, so many people that you can't really enjoy. You know what I'm saying? It's not, you know, so few people that. The atmosphere is just great. It's just a nice atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, you know, I'm speaking from watching it both as a as a spectator and actually being on the floor. You know, it's just it's yeah. just a nice environment. But well, I think, and I think there's some. We were talking about this just prior to starting the podcast. We were talking about how if they're going to expand the league, they need to do it smart, and they need to make sure they do it in the right places. And when we were talking about earlier the Montreal team, what they tried to do was they had, I believe it was like two, three Americans, and the rest were all Canadians. And out of a 40-game schedule, they won two games. And it wasn't very pretty. The team ended up folding. And I think that's not what the league wants. I think they want to get there eventually, but I think they need to – wait to get basketball as a whole better but one of the places i think they should look to expand potentially would be the city of woodstock i think the city of woodstock is a little underrated on the fact of how much they love basketball and how much it would thrive there but at the same time i think and you and i were discussing this and you can elaborate a little bit more on how the league also just needs to maybe stay at around 10 maybe 12 teams and see if they can hold that for a couple of years and make sure everyone holds around and they can make some good money off it first my that, yeah what do you think of it um like i'm probably one of the others from a, a, like a businessman you know but to look at it from you know that point of view you know i would think that would be the, and i'm speaking for myself that would probably be the best route you know is to get to a good 10 12 team from your professional experience, yeah. Get your good to a 10, 12 team and make sure they're solid, you know, and you have that point, right? And then eventually start adding teams. And if all else fail, you can go back to that original format with those 10, 12 teams and stuff is not folded and you still get to keep the season going, right? So, um, but I mean, like I say, I don't know what's going on in these. I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. I don't True. You know, yeah, I don't, yeah. All I can do is speak from playing in different leagues. And the league start out with like so many teams, and then you get halfway through the season, and they're trying to like struggle to like, well, you know, fix the schedule and stuff with the this team dropped out, you know, or that team dropped out, and it's it's it's, it's you know, a little I, frustrating. Yeah, it's, it's a little frustrating. I can understand from the owner standpoint, the other teams, because we we've been frustrated as players, you know, mm-hmm. like, because now you know you, your season has been cut back because let's say the team that folded or whatnot, you're supposed to play them three or four more times. That's a paycheck, right? You know, they're not even in the league anymore. You know, and it's just so, 
Yeah. Does that make you feel also a little? If you see a team go under, do you think in the back of your head do you go, hmm, uh, how long till my job's on the line possibly? No, it's, I, you don't think that. It's, you can't like, think I'm that. Always, you know, like you, you just you know, as a player, you do the research on the organization that you're playing for, just like they do the research on you before signing you. Um, but I, I, with me personally, I've always been, you know, fortunate enough to play for good, stable. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm like, so that has never been, you know, a worry of I'm all I wake up tomorrow and the team's gonna be still in this. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna get a phone call saying that, you know, don't don't worry about, you know, practice or nothing other stuff. The team is no longer like I've never had to worry about that. You know, I to be honest with you that right there, I couldn't even imagine the guys that, you know, have to do anything like that. Must be tough. You know, it's 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 just like, you know, people sit here and they watch us compete. Basketball is a fraternity, right? It's, it's, it's just a big, it's a big band of brothers, man. Like it's, it's no different than you know siblings. Like you live in the same room, even though you don't get along, but you don't try you to see kill, day you don't try day to day kill each other sometimes too, right? And that's just how it is. So you know, you there, you understand the struggle, right? You understand the work, you understand the grind. So regardless to if if when you and his team, this guy's team, and your team is, is on the court battling it out. You still feel for them if you wake up the next day and, and you, you know open the paper or you look on the internet or you hear through you know whoever hey you know this team folded yeah you, you don't want to wish because like, then that's this those are like good guys great players and they're just out of jobs over something that they couldn't control you and I'm wondering what it's like on the other end on the management side it must be really frustrating to see it just an idea you have and go oh, yeah I love basketball I want it to come to the city I'm in and then it's just not catching on. This is this here. Like that's one thing I can't say about here. Um, when I when I came here, like they it's reached from the they, start. Uh, yeah, they reached out to the community. Right, like that's where your support comes from. True. You know, like you know, we had appearances. You know, we did. You school, went to like every school, didn't you? We went to every school. We did you know, hospitals. You know, functions that we attended. You know. And you didn't mind doing it, right? I didn't mind at all. You know, it's just what that's what you have to do. Didn't mind to do at all, at all, right? But that's what you. Because you're not, you're a new league. You're not even because you're not NBA as well, right? So that's true. The when people can enter, but then you got to think about it. This is how it is. You, if you look at the NBA now, a lot of people only know LeBron James. They can only for probably see a on handful court, of players on yeah. the court. You know what I'm saying? They will only know a Kevin Durant, a Steph Curry, Kobe, or Jordan. They will only know them for on the court. So if you can actually meet and interact with this person, true. you know what I'm saying? Like. You know, it, it, just, it, it, it just, I guess it just does something, you know. It brings a little more to it. it. Just, you just feel like, okay, these people, are, this guy's down to earth, you know. Because, I mean, you think about it. If you Probably a lot of times if you saw me, let's say you come to a game, you're watching me play, and I'm just having a terrible night. So every time I, I shoot the ball, it's like, you know, damn. Like, <laughs> you just see frustration on my face. <laughs> if that's all you see, when you, you think leave, you're an angry, frustrated you guy. think that I'm just like this just bad guy not happy with life. How could he be that mad and he gets to play basketball for mm-hmm. a living and stuff like that? But then when you see it from a different light, you see me, you know, in the lobby or we bump into each other at a grocery store or you're a kid and I come to your school and, you know, you come up to me and say, I watch you play and you get to laugh and, and interact with them, you know, um, and it, it just changes things. And I think that's what they did. Like one thing that they hung their hat on here with the Lightning is, you know, being involved in the community, you know, um, just interact. Giving the people a chance to, to, to meet you, you mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. me, you know, Ethan Zeltman, me telling them the person, not the basketball player, you know. Because they're two different people for you, right? Two completely different people. Because it's your job. It's something that you're passionate about, you know. So when you are down that court, they, they see you. And you have to be a killer. They see you in kill mode. Yeah. They, they, they don't, it's nothing, it's nothing really. They, they see, see red you. in your eyes. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's what it is. And so when they get to interact with you and, and see you from a different light. When you actually get to relax. Yeah, you see a lot of people, like a lot of people, they, they say it, you hear it come from their mind, like, you know, oh, this is like way different than I thought you would have been. Well, let's say we didn't get in the community or whatnot, guess what they think? You know, yeah, most you're... basketball players are just a bunch of angry guys, like, they, yeah, you yeah. know, and, and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think that's important when starting um, or bringing a new team into this league. It's your first, like, your first order of business should be reaching to the community. Reach into the community. How can we get them out there? You know, and get them to interact with you. But that's what's going to bring 
that's what's going to put, you know, butts in the seats, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you come to the game with your family and, and you just have a blast and your kids come home and they're excited because they got to, you know, shoot free throws or one of the players that they play. So guess what happens? You tell your coworker, hey, man, it's a good family environment, right? And it just keeps going and it keeps going, right? So it just snowballs from there. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I think. And I'm just speaking for me. That's what I think, you know, but bringing a new team into this league, that should be the very first thing. You gotta make sure you're going into an environment that's gonna be successful. I think taking risks might be, I don't know, not that worth it. Do they, do they stay away from Toronto? Do they try to go into there? Well, what the, do you think? Well, they have a team in Oshawa. I think they have a team in Oshawa. Yes, but and they had a team in Mississauga. But yeah. I'm wondering, in the heart, can you try that? Could you try and do it around the Air Canada Center? That's a, that that's, type a, of that's a roll of the dice, though. That's because an expensive you, that's, endeavor. That's a roll of the dice because if you think about it, what's what's the nearest big like nearest venue that you could possibly? There's the Rico Coliseum. It's bigger than the John the Bat Center okay. or the Bud Gardens. Okay, okay. it's bigger than that. But would it be? And where is it? Is it more downtown? Because I'm not familiar. It's with that. pretty close. It's about fifteen. It's about fifteen minutes cab or so from the Air Canada Center. It's okay. kind of close. It's so it's kind of close. What do you think they would charge per night? Yeah, because you were saying Bud Gardens is like eight thousand. I think they might charge you know seven eight. So it's imagine, a good venue. So it's imagine fine. if you put that, and you now you're in downtown, downtown Toronto. Toronto. Yeah. That's gonna double probably easily, right? Because probably you know, twenty thousand yeah. people probably trying to book that venue for fifty. Yeah, it's got to be because it's like that's all you. So now you're already looking at okay. So you're looking at let's say fifteen thousand. They say okay, it's fifteen grand a night, right? And, and yeah, now you got twenty home games. Home games. Yeah. So there you know, you know your mind is right there. So that's already. You're in the hole. That's right your baseline, there. yeah. You're in the hole right there. You haven't hit payroll. You haven't hit travel. Yeah, we played a player yet. Yeah. yeah. None of that stuff, right? So, True. you know, you got to reach out and try to get them seat to it. So, you know, to, to try to hit that market, I think it'll be a, extremely risky. That's a, that's they should try to aim for around 100,000 to 200,000 people in pockets. Like, Sudbury's not a bad idea, you think? Or? No, because what you want to do is, like, you Because Niagara did well. Yeah, but you want to go somewhere. I, like I said, I would try to target somewhere that has a, a nice population but doesn't have much of a sports so story. much other stuff, you know, sports wise that they can get into. So it's kinda of like the thing that they do. You True. Know, like, you know, Sunday, you know, the team is playing. So let's go family you know, family day Sunday, let's go watch the team play. Like you don't wanna, you know, be in an area where they like, Okay, we got this this, you know, NBL team playing. We got the Raptors getting ready to play. Or we can go see an opera show, even. Or something like that. You know, that's like, it's, it's a lot of competition right there. A lot more going on, true. And so, I mean, and so Sudbury just, could be a successful yeah, You just don't have, like, everybody's not thinking in the mindset of, you know, okay, I spent $50 for tickets. I'm in the nosebleed section, but I'm at a Raptors game versus I spent $100 for four seat tickets and I'm right on top of professional athletes. Like, a lot of You can them hear them in the time. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of them don't. A lot of people don't think like that, right? It's True. Just more, I was at the Raptors game. I took my time. I took my kids to the Raptors game. So. Well, that's why I think Woodstock would be good because Woodstock, they have a team called the Navy Vets. They're a junior B or C team. I don't know anything about hockey. I apologize. Um, but they have a nice arena. The Woodstock Community Arena is not bad. It can hold around just under 5,000 people. And I think that would be a good size for them. There's 100,000 people in Oxford County. And there's not that many people who make that trip from Woodstock to the London area for basketball games there. I think that's where I think it could be a difference maker. But at the same time, you I have to do the research. Yeah, stuff. I think it would. It would. I think if you if they looked into it, and it's very sure, popular. I'm pretty sure basketball. they probably have. But uh, it could be good. They could be beneficial for both London and Woodstock, right? Because when you're on the road, there's nothing for nobody in Woodstock to pop in the car and drive to London True. to support the team. Because, I mean, when I was playing here in London, my fans would go to Windsor. They would go to Brampton. True. You know, so they would go two hours London away. London to Woodstock's not that far. Yeah, yeah, so London to Woodstock, that's almost like another home game. Yeah, So, you know, you bad. can imagine that a venue would probably be packed out, you know what I'm saying? And it would be really it's, full, it's yeah. Different yeah. Both people, you know, but like I said, I'm not sitting, I'm not in the boardroom when these conversations are no, no. still going on. So, I mean, they might have that in the work. We just don't know anything. True. Well, I think, yeah, it would be a great idea. But we're going to segue now to the NBA Finals, and we're going to talk about Golden State. Dum, dum, dum. And I think Golden State's just going to win by maybe 
I think four, to be honest with you. I I want Cleveland to be more competitive, but I just, eh, yeah. Golden State's not good. Yeah, they were all No that, stop. That last game, it, it, it can be an either or for the next game, for tonight's game, right? Like, you can say, you know what, that last shot KD took, took that hard. Technically fouled them. That's in the last two minute report. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a second. Like, all right, you know, he, that could, uh, you know, that could have took their heart. But then you can also say, you know what, that's that Cleveland is just determined to not get swept in the finals and come out and play all the night. Because it was a it was a it was a nail fight all the way down to the end. That's, that's how that's game one and two should have been. That's how it was, like that's how it should have been, but you know, I see you know, I was just watching and you can see the body language and it just doesn't look it's in just the cards. Like some of the players like the, their body language and their numbers, right? They're, just like their numbers are so far from their averages. Like, you know, you got Chris Thompson, you got J. R. Smith and Montreal, like all those guys I thought do a little bit better. That moment and do better. It's like their numbers drop like terribly. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. This is crazy, right? So it's like. And now they're expecting more of guys like Darren Williams and yeah, Tom Corbin yeah, when yeah, they were just supposed to be there to be the steady hands. Yeah, and it's just like, wow. Like, it's, it's just crazy to watch. Like, like how like, their game is just like not. It's like non existent even in these finals, right? It's just like, what is going on with these guys? You know, like. It's like they're going through the motion. Yeah, like, you yeah, have, well, let's yeah, go. You have a guy that gets you 10 plus rebounds. Well, like it's just, going into game three, Steph Curry had more rebounds than Tristan Thompson. Yeah, and you can't. Like, yeah, come on, bro. That's what they just cut you that big check. That's bro. what you're there for, yeah. <laughs> you're there to do the dirty work. Like, not that's what it. you did last year, right? That's what he did last year, and then he got that big payday. It's just like, wow. But like you said, man, Tammy, but it was, yeah, it's all the Well, no, it was two years ago in yeah, the finals because he started grinding, yeah. you know, beat Mozgov, and then yeah, I see you later, Mozgov. Yeah, yeah, yeah so like, um, you just look at it, it's just like, it's crazy, man. Like, Golden State is wrong. Right? They want it more, too. They, they want it way more. And it's like, they're firing on all cylinders, too. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, Curry shots on him. Clay Thompson seems like he's going to find his KD has been on since game one. And it's just... It's like <laughs> Kevin, Dur- Kevin Durant's the MVP. Yeah. The finals MVP, yeah, for sure. Easily. Like, if, he, if, they, <laughs> if they was the winner tonight, he'd just throw a bucket. You know, he'd, he'd fire everything. <laughs> like, seriously, man. But that dude, the numbers he's putting out, is just ridiculous, man. The last two-minute report, which I have a very big pet peeve about. Jeff Van Gundy and I would really get along, I think. The last two-minute report has it stating that Kevin Durant fouled Kevin Love on his uh, last shot attempt. What pees me off about this is, if you're going to say there's a problem with the last two minutes, then you need to do something better than just saying, oh, we made a mistake. Like, I know it's better than nothing to at least have you got the referee say, yeah, we made a mistake, but does the referee face any ramification? That's what we want to know. Does the referee, is it going to be now, okay, the referee is doing that crew. Do they scrap them and get new ones, or are those ones going to learn from their mistakes? Because what I'm wondering is, you don't want a Tim Dunnigan moment again. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think you have referees fixing games anymore, I hope. But, I don't know, I just, I find it very, like, what would you feel, Elvin, as a player, if you're doing your game, and all of a sudden, you hit a jump shot that was supposed to go in, you got fouled, you turn to the ref, you go, I got fouled, and the next day, they come in, and you go, hey, well, you know what, Elvin, you got fouled, and you're thinking in the back of your head, well, what the hell, I should have been on the line at least to try and take control of the game. I'm not even trying to hear it at that point, like, it's because you're, I made a mistake, I missed a call, just off your game. Yeah. Like, really, that's what happened, It, it just put me put my back against the wall. Like, so now they're down 3-0. Yeah, I'm down 3-0 now. Could have been 2-1, possibly, you know, but, you know, it's... So at that point, you're not trying to hear it, you know? You're not even, to be honest with you, as a player, you get fouled in a game and the referee come to you three, four plays later and try to say, you know what, I missed it. You're not trying to hear it at that point, you know what I'm saying? True. Like, so you can imagine it costs, it really costs you a game, a big game like that, and would you like to know, though, as a player in the back of your head, does it kind of vindicate you at least to go, well, at least, you know, I was fouled? Or do you still, I did not hear it. It, it should have been yeah, a call. It doesn't, like, I, like, you'd be better off not even telling me. Yeah. Yeah, like, honestly, that, that's just, leave it just better off just, you know, I know you missed it, you know you missed it. So, I mean, True. coming to me trying to justify the fact that it's you missed a big the play. Call, it's like, I don't, it's not changing nothing. I feel you like know, in the last two minutes, even in the, I, like, they should try even in the last two minutes of the finals to be like any play can be reviewed. I feel like the finals can be the only exception where they can 
be like, you know what, we'll take a little bit more time, let's actually get this right, but yeah, that takes away from the credibility of your referees then, because then you're saying we don't really trust our refs. But it takes away from the game too, right? Because and it does take a lot, yeah. You can't mess around and have a media time out the referee say, let me go back and review this. And then you guys got to sit down for four minutes, yeah, three and minutes. Yeah, you sit down and he reviews the play and say, you know what, he was fine. What if, Run what it back. Say, no, what are they going to say? All right, this thing. Kevin Long, let's line up. Those are the free throw line and take free throw yeah. You can't do that then, right? But let's say, let's, say, let's say that the, the media timeout happens while it's Cleveland the ball. So now he goes to the free throw line, he shoots his two free throws, and they get the end on the wall. It's almost like a technical foul. You get what I'm saying? So it's like you, know, uh, you can't go back. Because let's, say, let's put you on the other end of it then. Let's say you get away with one. Let's say you get away with one and they try to run it back. And you're going, what the hell? No, I mean, you can run it back. It's, it's, I mean, they they run it back, they run it back. I mean, they, if that's the rule, then that's Or would the best scenario be then to do a jump ball? No, you can't stop in the middle of a, of a foul and say a jump ball. Like, there's no real good answer to no, that. No, there's no good answer. Like, they just missed the call. You know, and it's, it, like I said, unfortunately, it's just, it, it, it's going to cost somebody. And it costs Cleveland that game, right? Like, it costs them big you know, time. You come down and, you know what I'm saying, you, it was up to up by one. And, you know, he takes a wide open shot, one of them, you know, a high percentage shot, and then he gets fouled, and referees whoops are stuck. And then the guy <laughs> that fouled goes right back down and nails a trade to put their team up too. And it's just like, okay, you what know, so, so we think about this now. He calls the foul. Goes to the free throw line, ice two free throws, they are three. He comes down. That it's puts a more three. pressure. Let's on. say he that hits puts, the three, too. He hits the three, it's a tie ball game. Then it's still Cleveland can yeah, make the decision the whether they win or lose the game. That's the fair way, yeah, to be honest. Like, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. But, you know, it's just, but I guess it's just try and get it right the first time. Yeah, it's just, I mean, but I think it's just. It's kind of hard. I think, you know, to the defense of the referee, man, like, it has been so much active now. That's it's true. hard to yeah. even blow a foul. You know, it's just like you see so much blocking. You second guess yourself a little. It's just like, man, like you know, like I can, I would probably be like that if I was a ref. I'm like, referee, and, and I even have a hard time. I, I haven't even done a high school game for London yet. And Woodstock, I've done some, but and I, I caught myself a couple times being, holy crap, these guys are pretty quick, and I'm thinking in the back of my head, oh shit, I better, yeah, I better, I better pay attention. But yeah, it's just you see so much blocking on being called, like you know, and it's just. So now that's you're frustrating. He's like, trying to hurry up and on that split second decide if it was a charge was block. It, was it a flop or was it a legit flop? You know what I'm saying? Or play on. Or yeah. You know, so you know what? Let's just let's just try to bring the one down the middle and I won't call another. You know what I mean? It's just how it is. You know? True. Well, is does does LeBron look tired guarding Kevin Durant or is just Golden State that good and just nothing else he can do? I don't think it's I don't think it's the fact that he's tired, man. Like it, it's. To kind of sum it up, you remember what they asked Kobe, like, who was the hardest person you had to guard? And he said, T Mac, he was like, because he can do all the stuff I can do, now. but he was 6'9. I think that's the problem LeBron's running into now. He has somebody that's like 7 feet tall, seven basically. Feet tall can handle the ball, can shoot off the ball, can is stop out. and shoot, can finish in the paint, can pass the ball. So he when has, they to, be, off he has to be, different. yeah, his defensive assignment now is like the margin of error is like, Real small because mm-hmm. if you off of something by a little bit, it's going to make you pay for it. Yeah. Right? So it's like, I can't be, you know, like I said, what happened now with him having to guard Kevin Durant is you notice he don't get a lot of those chase down blocks. He's not no, getting a lot of those, no. those in the passing lane steals when they mm-hmm. have a, a lot of that's not happening. Because him and Andre Iguodala are about the same size. He's, having, he can do he's it. having to stay at home with Kevin Durant, right? Well, mm-hmm. I might gamble, you know, against uh, Boston. Barnes. You know what I'm saying? Crowder or something. I might gamble. Or even Harrison Barnes, man. Yeah. Remember, he got like, we couldn't yeah. shoot. So I might gamble for that one. If I don't make it, if I don't get the pass or whatnot, they skip it. And that's a, that's a you know, small percentage he's going to knock this shot down. Yeah, I'll but take a chance. If they mess around and get it, they explain to Katie, that's going to cost you. Some, one way or another, he's either going to knock down a wide open tray, he's going to drive and kick it to two other dead eye shooters, or mm-hmm. he's going to get in the paint and finish. Like, so his, his defensive assignment is. is a whole lot. And it's no knock on Harrison Barnes. It's just when Harrison Barnes, and if that's if people were wondering, this is my opinion too. I don't know what you think. I'll get you to get to you in a second. But my opinion is that you see some comparisons of how they're like, oh, look how many more points. Look how well t- Katie's doing compared to Harrison Barnes. But Golden State wasn't asking Harrison Barnes to do that last year. And if people are wondering, oh, they, it's a good thing they got rid of him. 
they almost won another championship last year with Harrison Barnes. A lot of things went Cleveland's way for them to get that ring. It didn't just it wasn't just Cleveland coming in and bullying. It's easy to say, oh, they blew a three one lead, but yeah, I think this to say you you should have got the same numbers out of Harrison Barnes, I don't know if that's fair I to don't say. I think it's the same numbers. I think what what the, the thing that was the big issue with Harrison Barnes out there was the fact that if you go down and you look at his shooting percentage, if you look at his percentage, if you're looking at that and you know, the amount of wide open looks he was getting that he wasn't knocking down and, you know, and in hindsight like it was it was costing Golden State. You know what I'm saying? Like those are key possessions. And you come down and he's your starting three man and you pitching him the ball, he's an eighteen footer and he's just breaking, breaking, True. breaking. It's like, man, you know, so now, you know, I don't think they was wanting Harrison Bond to get him thirty. But I think that um, they were just wanting him to come out and be consistent with his shots. Just hit your shots. Just hit your shots consistent, you know. Give me fifty percent from inside the trade on line. Can we get that? You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So um, I, just to try to put him and say, oh, I don't, they, they wanted that performance out of him, I, I don't think that would have been fair for the organization to say, hey, come out and, and give us 30 at night, Harris and Bond. You know, that's just not what he did. But. Well, in Dallas, he has the ball a little bit more in his hands, too. It's a little bit of a different scenario. Well, yeah, I mean, because he's their go to guy. Yeah, you know, they he brought is. him in to go through him, right? It's like him, because Dirk is kind of the, he's on the decline of his Well, it's, it's smart to do that, yeah, too. So right? you bring in a perimeter player that can open it up a little more for Dirk and his jump shots and stuff like that. So, of course, he had the ball. He, you know, when he was at Golden State, he was like the fourth option, right? It was Curry, yeah, yeah. Clay Thompson, like Draymond Green, and then him. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it was. So he goes from being the fourth option to pretty much you know, the first option. So, of course, he's going to go through him. He's going to gonna go he's gonna have the ball in his hand more. So. Well, then my next question is going to be, you're the Cavaliers. What do you do down 3-0? Because, you, yeah, what do you do? At this point, it's just ball to the wall, right? We can't, yeah. You plan for, like, honestly, you are literally playing for pride right now. You know? Like, you got to at least you, try and steal one. You, like, you know what? I am not going to get swept. And you come out and you put your foot down and you try to... You and know, you don't look past game down. four, right? You take it literally one, one game, game at, at a time. time. One quarter at a time? One, honestly, yes. Just be like, you know what? Let's win. Let's win every quarter. Win this quarter. Win this win quarter. This win this quarter. Like, win, like, dude, like, it's, 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 a, like, it's a big psychological thing. And that's what it was like when I was in the CBA, like, um, I had spoke with the owner of the team here in London, and that's how they kept the game more competitive. It was, um, they had the score, the quarter score, but then they had this clock on the side for quarter points, right? So that's how you made it to the playoffs, was based off of quarter points. So what would happen is, let's say I come out and I'm up 25 after the first quarter, right? Mm-hmm. Well, a team would just drop their head like, you know, we got Fuck 25 this, we're you could still possibly win the next three quarters and come out of the game with three points. So it was like a point system. Yeah, it was a quarter point system. So you got one point for every quarter, and then you got like four, three points. You got yeah, three points for the Seven game. total points. Seven potential. total points. So like, let's say if I win the first quarter, but I lose the second, third, and fourth. So in theory, I'm only, coming out, out, I'm only yeah. coming out with four points. You come out with three. You get what I'm saying? That's so that bad. keeps the game every quarter. The teams are going at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they are really going at it because they're like, let's just win this quarter. Let's win this quarter. Let's win this quarter. You you're, not looking at the, you're not looking yeah. past anything. No, so that's what I think you have to literally take that one quarter at a time. You win the first, win the second one, or whatnot. Might slip a little bit in the third, but that cushion from you the first and second one. You still got to close it out. Yeah, yeah. close it out strong. But, yeah, you can't just say, you know what, let's, let's win this game and get to the next one. Let's win like, dude, just take it one quarter at a time. Play Play at that night, you play 4 12 in the game. That's what I think. Smart. Is. So. No, that's the best way to do it, I think. I, you, you, at this point, what else do you have to lose? I mean, Nothing. not to knock Tyrone Lee, he's obviously got to the spot where he got doing a good job, but what he's doing now isn't working, unfortunately. It's not. Bill Bob LeBron and everybody, it's like, that's not working. It's not. No, the Cavs are ready for that. Yeah, Golden State already. They are. They, they, they're ready. They're like, Steve Kerr just said it. They've been breaking like, what it down. You, what did you do defensively? Like, how did you build this defensive thing? He said it. He was like, I didn't build it. Like, Mark Jackson built this team. You know, this defense. That's what some people need to start realizing, too. Yeah. Like, yeah. But, you know, he knows it. And he's not afraid to say it. That's why I can respect Steve. That's, yeah. That's, like, that's a big respect. Because yeah. he don't come in and be like, ah, that's some of this thing. Like, he knows, like, hey, obviously. They won 54 games with Mark Jackson. Yeah, it wasn't just, like they didn't slouch yeah, there. I, just, I got a, like, good situation. And he knows it, right? And he don't say that. Like, uh, that's why I'm, like I said, my ass off is to 
everything else. Yeah, and it's unfortunate with his back. Hopefully he gets it figured out because it's yeah. pretty temperamental, it looks like, for him. Um, but I, I, I got a question for you. So Kevin Durant hits that big three. Steph Curry does that little squatty thing in the corner like he's taking a big old poopy. Um, what do you do if that happens to you? Do you see a player doing that to you? Do you go up and just straight up push him? Do you no, just... because you still have a chance to win the win. You get what I'm saying? Like, that happens, you're down two. You go and you push him over a big bumper. That's a technical foul. They get to go shoot the free throw. Mm-hmm. You're down three, and they get the ball back. They get a, a, and you're going to get fined. And they get a two or a three. Now that don't turn into a, a two or three possession game. Just like that, because you lost your head. You get it so... You know, you might not like it, but that's just the nature of sports. People are going to turn. People are going to, sometimes it turns to make it right at you. Sometimes it's just people are in the, the heat of the moment. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's no different than if, if um, you know, me and you coming down and you hit a big shot. And when you hit the big shot, I run down and get you a nice just fist bump or something. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not turning it right at you. It's just I'm so caught in the moment. My guy came through. We finna win this game. True. And it's just that's just what it is, you know. Would you be surprised if he gets a heavy bump? Like somebody driving into the lane and someone kind of throws their hip a little out of him? Or what do you think? Yeah, I would be surprised if they just don't play like that anymore. In the NBA. True, I guess I, yeah, I'm a little different thing in there. Like, yeah, so I would be surprised if that happened, but, you know, nobody's going to do anything. Else. Got a question for you, Alvin. What's up? Rasheed Wallace says the 2004 Pistons would sweep the Golden State Warriors. He said they would be way too physical. That's what I'm saying. And That's to be honest, who... That is what I'm saying. They would, Knowing yeah. that the NBA is kind of favored towards the hack shack world, then they can't put Ben Wallace too much on the line that much, so there's that they, that negates that. And Draymond Green on Ben Wallace, I'd be scared. Yeah, but the thing about it, Draymond Green is not going to drive. He's going to have to try to drive Rasheed Wallace. Oh. Yeah, Rasheed Wallace, he had post work. Like, he could step on the shoot, shoot, but he too. had post work. Like, oh, he had good He moves. had post work, and Ben Wallace was just, I, he was going to be. Tristan Thompson would have his hands full. He, you said the Cavs or the um, Golden State Warriors, man? I guess both. It doesn't but even matter. Whoever, they were going to have their hands full down there with Ben Wallace. And Rasheed Wallace was going to be, he can post. Ah, he yeah, can step out and Zaza shoot. Zaza would just be non Yeah, he's going to set screens and pick and pop and roll and things. And then you got Chauncey Billups, who was solid. And yeah, he yeah. would get buckets. You had a real competent good. Clay Thompson would running. have to guard him. And then you got Tayshaun Prince, who was like 6'9", real long. And he so had the same was, wingspan yeah, as KD. Yeah, so that was going to be, that would have been a nice, I don't know. The bench I, wasn't bad yeah, either. I, I think I, when they won, they had Mike James, the former yeah, Raptor, yeah, great scorer. Yeah, I'd pay to see that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll get my ticket. <laughs> and uh, I, I just saw this, just before we actually started this, I saw a little clip about how Andre Iguodala made a little hint that him, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant are going to be coming back next year. And I honestly don't see why they wouldn't. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but like you said, I don't. I don't see why not. Why well, wouldn't you, right? No, nah, but it's going to be, you know, like you said, Steph Curry coming up. This is, you know, he's a free agent, unrestricted free agent this summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you already got Draymond Inc. in at eighty something. You got Clay Thompson at seventy. So twenty eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, you got Clay Thompson at twenty. You know, uh, what seventy something? You know? Um, you got KD at two years, like fifty plus. So that's twenty something. You know? Then you got to come around and eat Steph Curry, you know. And if I'm JaVale Mickey, I try to hang around. Yeah. So this now is not a situation got, for so him. Now you got Andre Iguodala who's going to have to understand that, okay, so if I'll come back, i got to take a pay cut. I think he'd be cool with okay. it. Okay. I don't yeah. see a problem, you know, to be honest. You to take a pay cut. The Livers thing, you know, you don't have it. But JaVale Mickey, like, it's going to be, they're going to be the Golden State that they are now. They're going to have a couple good bench players. They're just needing to find rest. a couple diamonds in the rough. Yeah. That's what they're going to have to go for. A couple people who, like, you know what, I want to go play with them. Well, JaVale McGee was a good idea because you see his resume of work. You see how came in Washington with the Wizards. He did average 11 and 11. His field goal percentage was pretty good. He was a bit of a knucklehead. Yeah, but I think the best thing for him was to be on the team right now. Where you keep him in check. Where he has, like, guys who actually who's really got something. Right? You know, like, yeah. you know, you got on that thing, you got KD was, what, four time world scorer champion. He's an MVP. <laughs> You got Steph Curry, two-time MVP. Yep. You got Draymond Green always on the all-defensive team. You're not going to be able to raise your voice too much, no. Yeah, they're going to keep you in line. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to, you know, get you know, 
too out of control with stuff. But uh, moving on now, we're gonna move on to some uh, draft prospect. A very unfortunate thing. His name is John Janine. He's been diagnosed with Marfan syndrome, and uh, Marfan syndrome is a mutation in the fibrillin, and the fibrillin helps produce elasticity, the elastic fibers in your muscles. So hopefully you can figure it out and get better because, yeah, that's very unfortunate. It's a kind of shitty situation. But Isaiah Austin, a former draft prospect, he's playing overseas now. He was able to get better from it. Yeah. It does not contagious or anything like that. It's just you'd be in a lot of pain. And you're not really supposed to do a lot of physical exercise unless you've been cleared by a doctor. So hopefully he gets that figured out. Well, that, that just, just sucks. That just shows how extensive those, those, those skills are. They go deep. Probably NBA, right? You have a lot of players who go in and have played, you know, high school since they was kids, the legion career and stuff. And well, he was a professional sudden, overseas you know, for France. And all of a sudden, they go in and take that test and find out that they, you know, have something that's potentially yeah. that killed them or, you know, anything like that. Like Chris so, Posh. Yeah, you just like, man, like, um, it was a guy, that, um, he played with me in Yakima in the CBA, so Ron Ontario. He played at Gonzaga. He got Rony, drafted. Rony Terrier. Yeah, he got drafted. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, He got drafted, and then they found uh, something wrong with his heart. So he literally had to have open heart surgery. Oh, shit. And they had to go in and, you know, do whatever they had to do. But once he got cleared to actually start at it, he played on our team in yeah. Washington, right? In the CBA. So he played with us, you know, probably eight, nine games. And then, you know, we came He played in. for the Lakers, too, yeah. won a championship with yeah. him. He came in one day and, you know, for a game, and we seen him. Health check and all them sitting on the sideline. No oh, shit. He was gone after that. You know, it was just like, uh, you know, crazy. That's what I was You were trying to do the old moves too, huh? <laughs> yeah, Showing yeah, all your Jerry curl? Uh. I was trying to mess around my Charles Gervin, man. I was, like, I was in finger roll heaven, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to just another thing here. Uh, Robert Ory, Alvin, came out and said, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that. Okay, so Robert Ory won seven championships. He's no joke. He's won them with some great big men. He played with Shaq. He played with Akuma Olajuwon. He played with Tim Duncan. Yeah. He said, he didn't even put Shaq on his top three, which, Jesus Christ. Um, he said, Akeem Olajuwon was better than Tim Duncan. And I don't know, man. I'm going to list off I'm going to list off the resume and we'll go from there, okay? Yeah. So, we're going to go with Akeem Olajuwon first. So, Akeem Olajuwon is a two-time NBA champ back-to-back, 94-95, 95-96. Um, we got a finals MVP, two of them. We got a one-time MVP. We got two-time defensive player of the year, six-time first-team NBA, three-time second-team, three-time third-team NBA. So from 86 to 91, he was dominant. And then from 93 to 97, he was dominant again. Uh, he's a five-time defensive first-team, four-time defensive second-team. So from 85 to 97, he was just locked down defender. He's one of the 50 greatest players of all time, and in 2009 he was moved up to number 13. So that's that's Hakeem Olajuwon. That's a great friggin' resume. Yeah. Not take anything from it. Tim Duncan's is better though on paper. Just so you, just as a heads up, he's a five-time champ over a longer period of time. He's a three-time Finals MVP. He's a two-time MVP, so he's already outnumbered him there. He's a 15-time All-Star. I forgot to give Hakeem Olajuwon. He's a 15-time All-Star as well. Anyways. Um, He's a game MVP. Kim Olajuwon's not a game MVP. Uh, he's a 10-time first-team NBA. He's a three-time second-team NBA. He's a third-team or two-time third-team NBA from 1980, 1998 to 2015. Tim Duncan was dominant. Even in his last year in the NBA, he was the fifth best defensive center in the league. Okay. <coughs> and he's a seven-time defensive second team, and he's an eight-time defensive first team. So. 98-2015, like I said, he won teammate of the year in 2015. I don't know if that's an award to really put on there, but I just put it in there. And he's got a lot of great college stats, too. I, I yeah, just, but still, it's, it's, those are two different. You can look at the numbers or not, but those are two different style players. Very true. Um, Tim Duncan, like they call him Mr. Fundamental for a reason. For a reason he's yeah. going to get the ball down. To make the smart play. Make the bank shot. It's a great play. I'm not taking my from him. But, dude, like, if you ever get a chance, if anybody that's listening ever get a chance, just go and YouTube Hakeem Olajuwon and watch this guy. Watch his feet. Just watch his footwork. Watch his movement. Like, 
it, the, the dude was like a guard trapped in a seven foot body. Like that's what it was like, man. And, and it was it's it's crazy. I don't really see too many big men ahead of the DNA. I would say Shaq, due to his just sure dominance. Just dominant, yeah. You know, of course you would say Bill Ross and, and Will and Will. Dude, I honestly I can't that's, think. That's good I, if you want to if you were to say my Mount Rushmore big man, that's what it would be. It would be I would have Will. You would have Shaq, you would have Akeem Olajuwon, and yeah, I would put Jim Doc in there. But I'm not gonna say that's pretty. Good. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that. I, honestly, me and like I said, I've got a chance. I guess that's what that's the like kind of the advantage that I have. Yeah, and I'm that's the advantage that I have is that I was able to watch Akeem Olajuwon number when they was putting in there. True. You know what I'm saying? Like we I see the highlight. I've moves. watched this man dismount and dominate big man. Shaq I even said he couldn't figure I around. I watched him dominate Shaq. You know what I'm saying? Shaq it couldn't wasn't figure around So you think for him to dominate Shaq some game, it wasn't like he was backing Shaq down. Mm-mm. So Akeem Elijah wanted to catch the ball in the mid post and face you up. And make you move. And like literally footwork, boom, and he's like. There's know, a reason why Kobe Bryant worked out with him. Yeah, like the same like the same setup that Kobe and Jordan goes into the fadeaway with, the drop of the shoulder, the seller, the fall back. Akeem Elijah wanted to stand. He created. He was doing that stuff, and it was like you know the, the dream shape when you get ready to do the post move and it's the quick dream shape. Hey man, and and he was just you got to think he he was setting triple doubles with blocks and stuff. That's, so he, that's so a, he yeah, wasn't that's like you know what I'm saying that guy was he was the truth man. That's a hard triple yeah, double. That's a hard triple. Like that dude was the truth man. So um, I would uh, just due to the fact that I was able to watch him play and watch Tim Duncan play, I would say that Team Elijah Wong was better. Yeah, the numbers. On yeah, paper, Tim had, Duncan's better, yes. But then you got to look at systems, too, right? Like exactly. You have to look did, at systems. Did Tim Duncan play against Michael Jordan yeah. in his prime? Yeah. Did he play against, like, the Carl Malone, you know, in no. their prime? Did he play against the Patrick Ewan's in their prime, you know? No. When the, when um, the 90s was dominant with yeah, big men. Yeah, when they had, like, Rick Smith, and they had, like, David Arnold, Robinson, David too. Robinson. Like, I, you, you watched the one game where they gave David Robinson the um, MVP. And Akeem Olajuwon got pissed, and he destroyed David Robson. <laughs> David Robson, like, he flat out said during the press conference, it was nothing I could do. It didn't matter. Like, it didn't matter what I did. He, he was, he was, it was like, that dude was on this, like, he was a killer, man. Shaq was saying on his podcast, actually, which is a very good podcast to listen to, uh, somebody asked him who were some of the hardest people he had to face, and he said, besides Matt Geiger. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't know who Matt Geiger is, uh, not taking anything away from him. He just played very well against Shaq in the finals. And he got like a seven-year, $70 million deal. He got like really paid. But anyways, he said Hakeem Olajuwon was the hardest guy to get into. Like, he, he couldn't, like, he said, for instance, a guy like Patrick Ewing or David Robinson, he could go to a guy in the uh, a new, into the local newspaper or go to a reporter, make a little joke about him or say some bullshit about him and get into his head that way or get into his head by, you know, pump faking him, being physical and bodying him. He said, Hakeem Olajuwon, you couldn't do any of that. You try it all. He said, his trash talking was next level because he didn't speak English very well. So when he did talk shit to you, you knew it meant something bad because you knew he just was coming right at you. Yeah, and it's just like I said, it's that guy, he had, he had work. Like I said, that, it was to watch the stuff that he's doing. And I think now, like, I, I hate, like I said, I said it before, I hate all the comparisons, right? Because it's so tough. It's just, I just love great basketball. So when they start doing this comparison, because it's, you don't see any of these big men like that. Nothing in the league. Uh, you have, you have. Closest some, thing you could say is Dirk, maybe, because he's got to go to Jarosha. But he's maybe, not going down. He's going to play defense. Yeah, was, so, you know, that's the thing about it. Like, you tell me one big man in the league that. You know, Hassan Whiteside? You, you could go to and say, oh, yeah, but man, look at his, look at his weight. He wasn't hyped the way a lot of these models are coming out. I know, I'm just trying to think about it. But you yeah. have no big man out there. Say, you know what? Because like, the white side is not that good. You know, I, need, I need a bucket. I need to put the bucket down low or go to the free throw line. Draw a play up, man. We're going to give it to you on the block. Make it happen. You know, like you yeah, have yeah, absolutely yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, so, or you'll have some, but you're not going to get the same defensive presence. Yeah, but I'm trying to think of presence, who, yeah. you know, like, even well, DeMarcus either, Cousins. You know, like, yeah. You can go get a bucket. DeMarcus with Cousins. Anthony Davis. Yeah. Okay, that's What two. about Hassan Whiteside? Yeah, I, I see it. Like, I've seen improvement. You can see... He puts in work. Very true. Other Valanciunas? No. I, 
to go with Donatona. So, yeah, I'm going to tell you. I'm just big man coming in my head. Donatona's going to fall over that left shoulder and try to do that big man running hook shot. You already know. Yeah, you just like keep bumping him the whole way. Yeah, he's going to do the steps and he's gonna like try to sell the fact that he got you just keep your hand straight up and keep going over happen, but like seriously man what about Abaka? Abaka's kind of similar mm-hmm. but Abaka's he's catered for to a jump shot true you true know? that's why it's, it's just some guys that's how you that's what that's the point we're trying to make here that's how you meet the yeah. team Olajuwon yeah that's, that's what I'm saying it's just you know the point we're trying to make here that's how you meet the team Olajuwon yeah that's, that's what I'm saying and it's just you know not even Olajuwon Tim Duncan you know he was special too Tim yeah. Duncan can face you up and shot off the glass and you know, he was just a robot, thing. Thing. that's well, the other yeah, thing. Yeah, that's what it was. So it was like, you know, like we're trying to like discredit, in a sense, the work that one That's what I was hoping play. Robert Ori would do, is just be like, ah, they're both Dude. amazing players. Yeah, because they both good players. They like, well, yeah, I'm not going to say good, I'm short term. They are both great players. Yeah. You know, so Argu- like, you could argue, you could argue both of them being the best like, I, I hate, I hate when players do that, man. Like, I hate when it's just because oh, I play with you, and then I go play with another player. Because I got away along with this player better, I'm just like, you know what, this player was better than me. Yeah, because for all we know, maybe in San Antonio, his relationship wasn't that good. In Houston, that yeah. was where he got drafted. That was, like, yeah. his big starting point. Yeah, yeah like, maybe. that's what it was. Like, but, dude, like, you can't. Like, that's one thing about it, though. You can't, like, you know, I might not like somebody. I might not like another basketball player. If he can go, he can go. I'm not going to take away from, you know, the fact that he can play, man. You know, and I just, I hate saying that. Like, yeah, that just thing, yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyways, Alvin, I got a quick question for you. It's about a follow-up to your career because, unfortunately, the first episode was a little rough. Jasmine's being very quiet right now, and I appreciate that. You're a lovely kitty. Um, just wondering, though, so we're just going to go over a quick couple highlights. Uh, what was the biggest contract you made? <laughs> I know, I know. I, I just people ask me. I was going to say one-on-one. Like, one on, was like, was like, you know, 10 or 12 or more. U.S. dollars. So it was good. You're getting paid very well, mm-hmm. and you're always taken care of. You always had very yeah, good accommodations, always had good accommodations. especially here in I, London that's too. What I said. Always, I said, trust me. When I tell you, I've never played for a shaky or a bad organization. I have never. Like I did not hold wood. I've always been, you know, fortunate enough to, you know, rest or get, you know, some of those who played organization. What were some of the pet peeves though? Because I recall, if you don't mind me telling the story for you. There was one you were saying where you had a friend who wanted to organize like a tournament, and then he wanted you to put the money up, and then he wanted oh, you yeah, to. Oh yeah, like you have, yeah, you 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 see that stuff, man. You have to just, you know, take it as it is. Once you get to a certain point, man, you just you know you, you number one, you learn to say no. You have quick. to. You have to, or you won't have anything, right? Like it's um, you know, you're making, you know, your money or whatnot, but you still get taxed and all that. You still get too. taxed. But it's only for, you know, half a year. Six months. You five, know, six months. Five, six months, seven months. You know, a lot of basketball players go from one season right. They don't even go home. They'll finish playing here in Canada. They'll play somewhere else, true. Their next flight is, you know, touching down in Mexico or something. You know, like, true. They, they're not even going home. So it's, like, literally from one season. So it takes, like, a toll on your Some guys are almost playing long. 12 months a yeah, year. Yeah, some are playing 10, easy. You know, and it's just, like, that's a lot of, like, a lot of ball. And so people sit back and they're thinking that you're making, you know, they think you're making, you know, NBA money or real close to NBA money and stuff. Because so they, they hear you going, oh, I'm going to the Hawks camp yeah, or the Vet camp. Yeah, the so they think, that, they think that's what it is. Or you're playing professional, so you're just making it or you're waking and all this thing. So, yeah, of course, when you go back, you just, you know, and they, they, I heard Jalen Rose say, you know, like a lot of people, all they come up with these great ideas and all they take is your money. <laughs> you know, it's like it's serious, dude. Like they come up with this, and it sounds it sounds small. You know, like something small. I'm not saying they like let's go and start this big business and stuff like that. But they're just like, hey, let's put on this basketball tournament. And, you know, we can do an outdoor tournament. You know, and you know if you're so well, small, we gotta pay the ref, so yeah, you know, we can. Well, I can do the ref, and such and such can do the ref, and okay, fine. You know, you can buy the paint, y'all. You can, you know, make sure you get like all the food. And you, you know, you'll get your money back, you though. You'll it, sell it all. Yeah, you buy all the food and stuff, and then you don't get that, and we can split the profit or whatnot. And then you're like, hey, yo, like, what are you buying? Well, you know, I'll buy the paint for the court. You're like, dude, like, the paint costs a dollar a can. You can go get a can of white paint from, like, the local, like, Dollar General or something like that, you know, a hardware store or something like a dollar a can. So you really can tell me you want me to shout out. You know, hundred probably a couple of grand. Yeah, almost five thousand know, dollars. Next thing you to know, to get this set up, while you go spend five dollars on paint, like yeah, you know, you're like, dropping a you know, hundred bucks. But yeah, it's just that's just how it is. But, 
Yeah, you, just, yeah. you gotta just take it for what it is and just say no. Eh? Yeah, you just like you just take it. I mean, you have a lot of, you know, you meet a lot of players that play on this level, you know, and they just they understand what it is. You know, they understand that they're what they're at for a reason. And I think that's when I thoroughly started like enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? Like really enjoying it. I was like, you know what? If it was meant for me to be in the NBA. I'd be in the NBA. It's gonna happen. It's gonna it's happen. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. All I could do is play. The NBA wants you. They gonna find you. You know. So all I could do is play. And that's when I started like really. Even though it was business still, I really just started having fun. You just a lot of fun. Right? With it. Yeah, you relax and you because it's not so much pressure. You're not so mad at this shot you miss due to the fact that you can't. Yeah, we're not talking this. about we're not talking about like cutting loose, like going out and getting fucked no. up for five minutes. Of, we're talking about you know playing comfortable on yeah. the court. You're not mad. You know what? I blew this shot. Potential NBA scout, I'm saying, like, you know, like, yeah. not like that. You just like, yeah, of course you're mad because you missed a shot you think you should have made, but you know, you just own it to the Go next play place. Defense, like, yeah, you just like that kind of stuff. But you know, and a lot of players, with, you know, you, you notice a lot of players that come to terms with that, and, and they're actually okay with that, and they make the best of the situation. You know, they still want to grow. They're not comfortable. They still want to get to a next level, a higher level. But then you also have a lot of players that feed that image to people, like they are making. They put the persona on money. They put that persona on, right? And they, you know, I'm playing overseas. But people, a lot of people don't know it's a lot of overseas in the market that's only paying players, you know, 3000 a month. You know, uh, you know but they stuff say like that. Over here. Like, all they say is I'm in Europe. And so yeah. everybody's mm-hmm. like, oh, they cash me this big money. No, nah, this dude, he's over in Europe. He's only making, you know, three grand a month. If that's on my Which is still very good, but yeah. it's not. But, yeah. but, you, but you think about it, man, and that kills the market at the beginning, right? Because a lot of. A lot of legit players with resumes are, are kind of at home or they're playing, you know, in different leagues. That's why they started to have, like, the whole controversy with buyouts. And they had that with the mm-hmm. CBA, right? Because what happened is when you go overseas, you have agents that's trying to, like, pitch younger players. So they're saying that my player, how much you want to play this? Oh, we, this guy's on, you know, 12000 a month. Hey, my player do it for five. You know, I can get my player in. Same kind of player he's this and that I've seen. How like hey, we can do it. The people think, oh, hey, you know, you know, they they pretty much the same height. They play kind of like he can come in and be this player. And then they get in and they get near waste the season. That player is not producing the way they want. So they gotta go back and call up guy A to come uh, back over, right? Uh, but guy A is in the CBA or the NBLC. So guess what happens? He's getting paid somewhere else. Nah, he's getting paid. He can go. Because it's more money, but guess what that organization has to do now? Well, I know it for the end, um, for the CBA, it's that they had to do a buyout. So they had to give that organization, at that time, it was like, you know, 15, 20 grand to buy the guy out of his contract with them so that he can go over there. So but when, and yeah, when you think, like, people sitting back and listening and going, oh, well, that doesn't seem like too much money when you're running a professional organization. That is a lot of money because yeah. you have someone who's breaking down all your numbers and you need to make sure you're not a getting screwed over on your money because if you keep doing that, that's not how you run a successful business, right? Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, like I said, you know, you, you have people and they sit back and, you know, a guy walking in the room, and, yeah, I just came back from overseas, I was in Europe, and the first thing people think is, like, yeah, he, he, Ooh. yeah, he, like, broke the bank. I'm not really the case, you know what I'm saying? It's just, so that happens, and, you know, so of course if that happens, there you have families, you have everybody that thinks that, you know, you're just growing at this major, So yeah, they come to you with all these. He's a shitty tipper. Let's take your thousand and flip it to ten thousand kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm good. I just hold on. I'm like, right. If that's the stuff. case, how come you asking for my thousand? Yeah. I couldn't get the second yours and flip it to ten. You know, so yeah. Oh, fair enough. Um, quick question about your son. So he's turning three. Yeah, turning three on the twenty second of this month. What uh, what are your game plans for him from now till the age of ten? Let's say he loves basketball, because I remember we talked about this, and you said, whatever sport he wants to play, you're going to support him. It doesn't matter. You love your son. If he wants to play hockey, you're going to put on a pair of skates and try and figure it out with him. Yeah. But let's say in a perfect world, he's playing basketball, and you're here in the city of London. What's your game plan from ages 3 to 10? I think um, if he just if Developmental-wise. I think he would be into it, because he just loves basketball. He looks like it. He's always he loves, grabbing the ball. He loves everything about basketball, right? So I just want to, like, he loves it. And let it fall in love with it. I'm not going to be out there pushing him. You know, we still, I play around the house with him and, you know, we dribble and, you know, we play. But 
once you get to the point where he's, you know, impossible to stop, man, that with love to it. And Since 10 years old is like the first age for him. Yeah, I think uh, I, the first thing I'm going to start working with him with and that I will work with him is his passing. It's ball handling. And, and why is his defense? Why passing? Because, man, it's his shot between, it's, it's crazy, between between 5 and 10, his shot has changed. Probably between, between, between 10 and 15, his shot has changed. Between 15 and 20, his shot has changed. You get what I'm saying? So I'm not going to go into this. Pass constantly, can't change. Constantly, constantly harping on, you know, you got to shoot, you got to shoot, you got to shoot. Yeah, we're going to work on your layup. We're going to work on you taking a shot here and there. But I'm not going to go in and we're not going to just come in and specifically just work on shooting on You know what I'm saying? I do drill. I play defense on him. I'm a pretty tall, lanky, long guy or whatnot. I'm going to guard him. I'm going to sit yeah. down. You're going to play D. You'll learn how to bring the ball up the court with pressure on you. You'll learn how to pass the ball and move without it. I'm going to teach him the fundamentals. Right? This, I'm going to teach him the fundamentals of the game. You know, having said that, I want him to have something to fall back on. You know, and that's what's wrong. I think that's what's wrong for becoming a problem with basketball now. It's that they're skipping fundamentals. They're trying to come in and go right to the advanced stuff. So when the advanced stuff gets uncomfortable and it's not working, kids get frustrated. They want to quit. They baffle because nothing else to fall back on, right? Even professionals, I've done it myself. You come in, your shot got a hiccup, your shot got a glitch, and it's just not feeling good. You can't knock it down. You go back to the fundamentals, you know, under the ball. Start from square over, one, pop yeah. the wrist. You start from, but you have that fundamental. I'm going to tell you, you it, was, it was perfectly true. said with, um, if you ever watched the Pepsi commercial with Tyrese, the Uncle Drew, yeah, yeah. He said it like perfectly. Like you laugh, and it's a good thing. But he says if you pay attention, he said you learn the fundamentals just to forget them, mm-hmm. and that's true. Like you learn the fundamentals of it. But how many times do you see basketball players come down now and do the front of traditional chest pass or traditional bounce pass? You don't see that. Mm-hmm. But if they got down to it, they can go back to it, right? When shit gets the hit in the fan, yeah, yeah. And that's what it is. Like and that's what I'm teaching. That's what win the game. I'm true. teaching them fundamentals. Like you don't learn how to. You know, get the pass, you know, to the threat. Triple threat. Yeah, you're going to learn how to you know, position three. your body. You're going to learn how to, you know, play or bring the ball up court with defense on you. You're going to learn how to apply pressure to somebody. You're going to learn how to play defense, you know, off the ball, on the ball, you know, help side defense. Like, I'm going to teach them all that stuff. We'll get to the shooting. Shooting is one of the last things. That stuff will come. Like, we'll work on it. Like, I'm not going to just have them in the six, seven days a week just doing ball and handling and watching them. It'll yeah. take a day to work on the shot, but it's not going to be. I'm coming in five days a week. We just getting up reps on reps on reps. Shoot, they really, you know. So from the age of 10 to 15, that's when you start focusing on? I think from the age of 10 to 15, his body's starting to mature. His body's going to be changing, right? These things body, are, yeah, are so. going to change a lot between 10 and 15, right? You know, and it's just, you know, he, I don't, he's not going to be a strong kid. Like, you know, you're tall and you're, person at all, yeah. you know, so um, it's just like, that's what I want. I want him to, you know, I, I will stress to him how important it is to not be a one-dimensional player, right? I want you to work on, you know, back to the basketball, pacing up and like, you know, being able to step out to the 15-foot range comfortably, being able to step out to the three-point line comfortably, being able to put the ball on the floor and pull up. Making being smart plays. Just smart plays. I don't want you to come down and be able to have to do, you know, 10, 12 dribble moves before you get a shot off. I want you to be able to come down. Not everyone's James Harden can do that. Come down and put the ball, you know, position, get your man with a move, get to your spot, just be efficient with your move. Like, that's what I'll, you know, I'll preach on. And that's what, you know, and to be honest with you, like, if that's what he want to do, he has, that's one thing I will say. He has no choice but to be receptive to it, you know, and and that's just, that's, that's where I want to go with him, you know, but like I said, if anything, I'm not going to force him. I'm not going to serious or whatnot, then we're going to do it. You know, I'm going to tell him, look, you know, you have a coach, you listen to your coach. Your coach wants you to do this, you do this. I would not be one of them parents that's like, you know, I go to a game and he don't play. I'm going to ask him, why didn't you play? I'm not going to go ring this coach out. Why didn't you play? Like, what's going on? A coach don't like me. Well, why? You what know, is it like, that you did to get what's to that going point? on? Yeah. yeah, like what's going on? Like I'm not, you know, because like, you're no fool. Yeah, I know. I know how it goes. You know, yeah. like, you see it all. You see, you see it all, man. I, I hate to see like, you know, I don't, I don't want him to to come along in sports with entitlement. You know, to, to 
Why you gotta even, if he's, even if he's the best player on the team, you gotta be humble. Humble. if he's the best player on the floor, by far, humble yourself. You know, I, that's just that's what you do. Don't disrespect the game. Don't disrespect your opponent. Don't disrespect the game. Don't underestimate your opponent. Yeah, don't underestimate yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? You come down. So what? You pass to your teammate, you miss a shot. It ain't your place to come down ringing him out and, and, you know, jumping around and, you know what I'm saying? Because body language, you know what I'm saying? It, it tells a lot about a person on the basketball court, you know? And that's like, if you want to go far in this right here, man, like, you, you can't have, you know, you can't, you want to be a good teammate. Your body language, you know, try to keep that. And you're going to have some time that something will happen if your body language is just scream frustration or being pissed off or, you know, whatever. But, you know, in hindsight, just try to get him to be the best overall player, you know what I'm saying, that he can be, you know, and like, that's just where I want to go with it. Right? And then hopefully at some point he just, he expects nothing less than that of himself, and he's willing to just put the work in, whether I'm there in the gym with him or not, you know, because and that's what I'm looking for. Probably, so. Well, then what's your next move? Well, it's a smart move, too. What's your next move? From 15 to 20 in high school, going to high school, university. Well, I mean, it's, it's is a prep school a factor, or I mean, it's, it happens. It, it happens. depends on yeah, it happens. It happens. I'm not I'm not sitting back like hey, that's our target is prep school. Because that's my it's that's my other right, question. Yeah, is prep school if you're gonna try and get your son to the NBA, do you want to try and do it like Thon Maker did? You're gonna have to go to a prep school, or yeah, do you think you can do even, it the other way? It's not even that. Like, I'm not trying to get him to the NBA. People only go, I support him. You're trying to get the right tools. If he yeah. say, you know, like that, like I want to try to just get him a full scholarship and go to college and get me a degree in this and go to work. Like, all right. If that's what you want to do. Because what do you have a degree in? You went to the University yeah, of Southern I Mississippi. Yeah, I have a minor in elementary education and then I have my major in graphic design. So you have something to fall back yeah, on. So, but it's, it's, you know, that's what, you know, that's what it'll be. Like, I'm not going to be, you know, NBA, NBA, NBA. Of course. I tell him it's a very, it's a possibility, you know. But you know, I'm a one thing. Don't put your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, you know. That's you want to show them. Hey, like, players in China can make a lot of money yeah, too. You can still make a million bucks know, over there. Like that, but you know, from I say from age 15 to 20, you know, just I think that's when the the working on the the humbleness, you know, trying to be keeping you know, a level headed, keeping a level headed, working. Is your son going to play AAU? <laughs> like I said, it's, just, it's hard to say, no. Like, I, I, I Very don't true. Say you don't know where it's going to be. Yeah, I don't want to sit here and say, oh, man, this kid can <laughs> never play. Or, yeah, that's all you want to play. Like, you know, I'm not going to sit there and Would it be that. fair to say that you want your son, if he's going to play AAU, high school, university, you want your son to just be in the right basketball environment? I just want him to be, like, I think that's where, as a parent, that's where I would step in. Like, I'm not going to make this decision for him, but I will weed out and try to help him weed out situations that's not good for him. The best you know what possible, what I'm right? The best okay. possible situation for him. And then after that, and then once he gets to, you know, 18, 19, 20, you know, as hard as it will probably be as a parent, you know, it's, it's about time for you to just kind of, you know what I'm saying, just kind of let it loose and let him start making decisions for himself, you know. And if he wants, it'll go from me helping him make decisions to if you want advice. I'm hearing good. hearing what his decision is and then seeing what you think. Yeah, like, you know what, not even like, you know, you tell me a decision, like, and like, hey, you decided that you want to do this, yeah, and then I ask, why? Yeah, if, if he, you know, because of this, because of that, if it's a legit reason, then hey, you know, you still ain't got to figure it out. If it's just, if he basing it off of just, you know, superficial stuff, you know, uh, I want to go to this college because they got a contract with Jordan. Oh, I want to go to this college because uh, of this and that stuff. Kind of yeah, I'm like, yeah, you know, but what is it looking like in your position? You know, are you going to have to come in and play behind this? Like, what, what is it looking like? Are you going like to get the attention you deserve? Because that's where it comes into factor. Yeah, so, like, you know, that's what I tell him. And, I mean, if he's just, you know, hell bent on going there, you know, you will. I'm going to support you, you know. But, you know, it's just you need to put more in the pocket than the shoes that you're in and, you know, the way that uniform is looking whatever they showed you on your visit and all that stuff, right? So, um, but yeah, that's just what it is. It's just kind of venturing off and letting them make this own decision. And you just kind of try to, you know, be that support system. So, okay, and then here's the next rep. The next rep will be, he's 20 plus. Yeah. Into adulthood now. 
and there's two scenarios that we're going to go with. One, he's in the M. Well, three. The third one, obviously, is he doesn't go to the NBA. He does what he loves, which is cool. I'm fine. Yeah. But we're going to go with a little more interesting one because we all want to see what your take is. Let's say the first option is he gets to the NBA. And he's, yeah, he gets to the NBA. What's your what's your plan of attack to try and help him maintain what he's doing? Just for that matter, I mean, I go to work. Stocks. Just because he can. Just because, okay. you know what I'm saying? It's crazy because you hear it back last day. I'm like, make it at that. As hard as it seems, you got swam for nine chance. It's the easy part. The stand is yeah, the work. You know what I'm saying? And Being a 10 year vet. Yeah, that's the work. So, you know, now you're not playing against, you know, one or two players that's real good here and there. They're all but like they're all the, the, the most the elite, little bit separating them, right? College player. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, you, you got to put that work in because you're, you're going to get out of it what you put in. So you go in thinking, hey, I'm just this big draft pick, and I'm just they're gonna they're gonna eat you alive. True. Because they're gonna make it. They, that's their thing is to try to make an example. Because mm-hmm. as unfair and as unfortunate it is, the newest hot, like the hottest kid that's coming out that next year, or the hottest kids, they're gonna always compare and say that they're better than somebody that's in the NBA. And True. most people are gonna feel like they have like something to do with Steph Curry and yeah. everything. So yeah. now <laughs> these people are gonna be like, we're gonna show them. Example out of that, you know what I'm saying? So, the, like, are you ready to grow in? It's just grown in now, you know, like, and just hopefully, like, you know, just try to raise them right as far as like off the court, you know, to make yourself smart, make moves. yourself smart moves, and make the, you know, the season. Like, you know, we all been kids, we all been young adults. So we all got kind of fun. We all got skeletons in the closet. We've all made mistakes. We've all done stuff that we probably look back now and be like, mm-hmm. I hell that I can get out of that situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we all have that. So, to try to shelter from life, I don't think I'd be able to do it. I just want to make work. the best decision. You know, like, and that, that's just my thing. Like, do you try to become his agent, or are you just, you know, I'm, that's his own business? I'm not just my person. Like, you know, like, I'm not. He do his own thing? I'm not coming in. I, I don't have a qualification to be an agent. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't, I can't pick the phone up. You could be a and trainer, I, probably, more than I could be, I, I could do more of a trainer than yeah. I can help him more being like a trainer than I could being an like agent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I, me trying to do that, I'm doing nothing but hurting him. Because that's one thing about it. I have no problem saying I know absolutely nothing. I can't pick the phone up and, and call. I can't pick the phone up and call the Raptors office and they get a message to, um, what's the dude? Masai Ujiri. Yeah, and they be like, you know, Elvin Mill call. And, and you know who <laughs> I am and give me a call right back or the Detroit this and like, I, I don't have those connections, right? So, for me to come in and say and that, that's what you have to tell him too, right? Yeah, like I, mean, I doubt that he even coming and talking about being an agent. Like I, the first time he coming in, be like, "Man, you want to be my agent?" I'm be like, mm-hmm. like, like, "Do you want? Do you want to be in the NBA?" Yeah, we'll like, go, like, on, go talk to an accountant. Yeah, let's go talk to someone. Let's go find. Like, if you really want, if you, you know, you you want an agent, like they'll find you. True. It's yeah, just yeah. trying to cycle through the snake. Like you're trying to, you know, because is that what you'll help him with instead? Yeah, because yeah, that kind of stuff. See, because has his best interest. Yeah, because when it comes to those agents. It's this agent, I got the same agent as, as LeBron and, and let's say Dame and and Kawhi Leonard. Mm-hmm. But to be honest with you, those three guys are his number one priority because they're his main money getter. They're making the money true. They get to you when they get to you. You get what I'm saying, kind of thing. So you want an agent that's gonna work. He's you. hungry. Yeah, he's hungry and he's gonna, but he doesn't have a team as well. Mm-hmm. You know that plays a lot too. You know you don't want to have an agent who sent a bunch of bad people through my line. You don't want to move her and shake her. So, yeah, so every agent went out of get your name. They're like, oh, we ain't really thinking about nothing. You know, we can't connect with people with no phone calls. We can run take the call and stuff. So, yeah, I, 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 would, I would help them go through that process, but it was like, no way. I would, I would try to do you it. can't live through them anymore. You've I'm already not, had your job. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to live through them at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, live your life. Like, I, I've done my life. I've done what I want to do. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why when I decided, you know, that it was just time to retire. Did I still want to be like work in it, yeah. I still want to work in it, but actually, you're talking yeah, about being involved in yeah, basketball, like, yeah. You know, coaching and you know, training and stuff like that. Yeah, I want to do that part of it when the but, time comes, yeah. yeah. But I the desire to play on that level anymore, it's just it's not there. Like, I don't, just I just don't want to do it no more. Not like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I still get up and, and go play, you know what I'm saying? Just because yeah. that's my cardio, and I get to do that, you know, two, three, four nights a week sometimes. So, I tell people that's my cardio because if I had to get on a treadmill. 
<laughs> I can't get no credit. So that's like my party and stuff. Man. But, yeah. That's good enough for you. Ain't just what you're yeah, playing right now. Just play. Well, all right. Here's a funny one for you, Alvin. Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball did a workout with the Sixers. Yeah. Was wearing his shoes. What the what the hell is that? Why do you, why do you have your shoe? You have your own brand that you use that loosely. <laughs> Yeah, you know, what? I don't know. Maybe he's not a big baller. <laughs> no, like, like seriously though, man. Like it's, it's yeah, that's the thing that's great with man. Like is is you see Kobe, he's wearing the Kobe. You see LeBron, he's wearing the Kobe. You have Katie, to wear your. You have to. Steph Curry, he's wearing it. I don't know. Why would you? He wore his Jordan. Like they had a picture, like literally, like three days or so after they came out with the shoe, and they had him, his dad, and his two brothers, yep. and none of them had any of the big ball other than T-shirts. They had none of the shoes on. Oh, there, there was another one where they were buying Jordans. And were, yeah. They were at a shoe yeah, store in LA. Yeah. yeah, they just buying like Jordans and stuff, man. I'm like, dude, like, you know, but. Like, yeah, shit. Uh, <laughs> that, that's just, that, that's just the situation, man. It's selfish. It's just like, it's, that's a head scratch. Yeah, that's a real head scratch. Like, it's I, think, like, I think Lonzo Ball should talk to Stefan Marbury about fucking branding. Yeah, it's just like, man, it's just. It kind of like it, it's it's one of those situations where you kind of feel sorry for him, but you also still want to see it unravel to see what like it goes. Yeah. yeah, it's like, <laughs> man, like I hate that it's happening like this, but I want to see how this good ends. Like, yeah, it's just like man, I want to see how this ends because you have a lot of people that like uh, you know you, you can't get mad at the man for trying to sell his kid and things like that. Within reason, no. But when you have nothing, it's like as far as your brand. You have you, you haven't had any major athletes wear it other than you and your son, you know, and then you start coming to tell these major corporations like, no, we don't we want more three million now. Yeah, we want you know what? we want we want partnership like we want to like franchise our own like thing and all of them tell you to pretty much go fuck yourself, you know. But it's well, like, Nike and Under Armour had on the table ten million over five years. Yeah. I mean, Fifty million dollars over five years I mean, but, for a guy who just played at UCLA. Yeah, for it's one like, year. I, it's, it's, I That's think not it's, fucking it's, bad. It's getting to the point where it's like, whatever happened to people saying, you know what, I gotta pay my dues. Pay your dues. Yeah, literally, he's not going through the shit. Jordan did it. LeBron did it. Kobe did it. That's true. They all Kobe paid didn't have dues. a shoe right away. That's, That's true. true. They all did it. They paid their dues. They didn't work. What they did, what they were supposed to do. Uh, you know, I come in the NBA to play ball. They came in. They did it. And then on the Back side of it, they got they all want well, their brand. The money started coming in. You get what I'm saying? Like he wants it think, right away. Yeah, you think about it. So it's like They're not okay. even doing it in the small. So way. it's like this now. If a guy comes to you, right, and um, he comes to you and he's saying, you know what, like, um, let's say you own you own a shoe company. I come to you and I'm trying to like pitch this idea, <laughs> and I'm like, but I want the money all up front, and I want a piece on top. Yeah, yeah and I want like you know what I'm saying. This money up front, mm-hmm. you're gonna be like, dude, why you want all this money up front? Like, what, what's going on? Here? You don't even like, do that with LeBron. Yeah, like, I think about how long LeBron came in the league in 2003, right? Yep. He like, had to deal with Nike in place then, but yeah, he didn't negotiate. But, he just took and said, hell yeah, I'll take the Nike yeah, return. But now I think he has what, like, that lifetime, like a billion dollar deal? Yeah. Unless he's made them probably four billion. Yeah, look at how much work he's put in. Like how many? He's pairs. won two championships. So three now championships. you, so now you have this one kid, you know, who's coming out, hasn't played one tick in the NBA, and his dad said, "I want a billion dollars." So basically, you want me to give you a billion dollars off of the potential of your shoe? Then you're better than LeBron James. I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. Kevin Maybe Durant, Kevin Durant got three hundred from him over ten. Seriously? Yeah. You know, like come on, settle down. That's what I'm saying. Like, these dudes are cool. This is what makes me yeah. frustrated. If I see, and maybe because I just don't make that much money, but if I see fucking $50 million over five years and I haven't played in the NBA yet, I'm you taking that deal. Too, that's I, a smart business move. That's a great I, I starting said, point. Said, What's wrong with not having that? I'm just saying that if I didn't have a right representative when I was in the NBA or something, man, I, yeah, I promise you, I would have to have the right agents and stuff because, yeah, like, some of these contracts you see these guys turning down. <laughs> Seriously. Like, like, oh, such and such turned down a four year, $60 million deal. Uh-huh. Four year, seven. You're like, what the heck? Uh-huh. And then they turn around and it's like a week later, they're like, oh, you know, the deal, they closed it out at four years, 90. You're like, what the 
Like, they knew something yeah, that else. But shit. I'd have been signed that 40 or 60. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Funny, I don't know. Like, they'd have to pull up another cop. I'd have probably, like, burnt a hole in it and signed yeah. that person. But, you know, like, that whole ball stuff, it's just, I don't know. It's just, like, like I said, when you talk to your son, man, like, at some point, you just got to let him be a man. You can yeah. be able to guide and stuff, but you let him make their own decisions, man. But uh, regardless of what people say, man, that dude is, like, to me, I can speak personally for me. I can't speak for nobody else, but. I think he's trying to capitalize off the sides. Too much. Stuff. I think he's like, he is trying to like, He's not even doing it subtly. Off. Like, why it's not, not sell right. a shoe for a hundred bucks US dollars? That's yeah. not bad. That's it's reasonable. Like if, if no one's going to shit on you then. If you can't buy this shoe, you got a big ball around. Like, 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 and he like, seems like all nervous and awkward in his interviews. And you're yeah. like, dude, why are you doing this then? Yeah, like, or he's saying to the, to the female uh, reporter, saying, stay in your way. And it's like, come yeah. on, man. Jesus yeah. Christ, show some respect. I mean, don't get me wrong. I grew up with my parents and whatnot, and that was the rule. Like, as long as you under my roof, you live by my roof. I'm pretty sure everybody's parents told me yeah. that. Everybody's heard that line before, but, like, this dude is, he's going to be an Indian player. He's going to make millions to play basketball, so you got to drop this whole as long as you under my roof. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? The dude is literally in a year's time about to have way more money than you've ever had. You know, so, you know, you have to be there for guidance, man, because what's going to happen is, it's the whole subconscious part of it, right? It's the whole, like, subliminal part where his son might not be saying nothing, but one little thing worked out, he's going to think that's how you do business. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's not going to be good at all. But Maybe like, that's why Nike and them were like, actually, we reject our offers. We're going to take them back. Yeah. Because for all we know, maybe, maybe, maybe in five years' time, if and when we're still doing this podcast, we'll go, hey, mate, Lonzo Ball, best player ever to play and pick up a uh, basketball. Like but as of right now, that's a lot of fucking money to be putting on the line. A billion dollars, and that's the way you do business. Like, okay, if, like you say, if Bill Gates came in here and we was trying to do something, he goes anywhere and, and people go on computers, he can go in and make the names. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with like Apple. But he's Same still thing. not going to go to some developer and go, oh, you guys want to charge a billion dollars for your software? Fuck yeah. that. We'll figure it out somewhere yeah, else. We'll figure it out. Like, that's what I'm saying. Because you got to think, like, you're going to have diamonds in the rough mm-hmm. in that draft, right? You're going to have some guys that are going to go, you know, mid We're going to get round. to that in a sec, too. Yeah, mid first round, and it's going to turn out and be as it happens in every draft that's going to be better than the top 10 picks and stuff. Well, if you could just ride it out for a couple of years to sign one of them, they will be more than willing to sign the shoe deal. You get what I'm saying? Uh, uh, yeah, there's probably a lot of guys going, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, just one second. Sorry again about that. I had to take a small bathroom break. And anyways, back to what we were talking about. Um, we're going to get on our way to... <sighs> so we're going to talk about the Raptors and their 23rd overall pick. And hopefully... We get something going with this. I really hope, uh, really hope we can try and get a steal from it. We were looking over some of these guys <clears throat> the Raptors might be looking at, and one of the first guys we're going to break down. First off, I want to thank my friend Johnny for this. He actually helped me get some research here, Elvin. Go with Johnny. Um, so the first guy we're going to look at, his name is Ike Anyabagu. Anyabagu. I can't have his eye. He played 13 minutes a game. He averaged 5 points, 5 rebounds, and 1.2 blocks. He's a freshman. It's pretty raw, to be honest with you. What do you think? Uh, I don't know. I, I got to watch him play. I got to watch some more highlights on him. Of course, just watch footage. It's hard to even just watch highlights because they only got to put in, you know, the good stuff. That stuff yeah. yeah, but uh, do it. Uh, uh, averaging 5 and 5 as a freshman, man. Like, that's kind of like you can stay up a little Unless, like I said, unless there's some stuff going on and we don't know nothing about it, unless you're with, like, NBA records and stuff, and they're, like, chomping at the bits to get to them because they see something, like, you should stay here. Like I said earlier, it's, like, I don't know when people start feeling so confident coming out of school to playing for the draft, like, on the average of five points and five <laughs> rebounds as a big man. You know, and like I said, I'm not knocking up about it. Like, you know, we spoke about something like this on a previous, you know, uh, you know podcast, but... If I average, you know, 1.2 points and, you know, 2.3 rebounds, yeah. and I'm a six, you know, six, eleven, seven foot big man, and a team comes to me and say, hey, like, we want you, we're going to take you at number 10, I'm not going to say, hey, nah. Uh, you know, if I only average 1.2 points and, like, 2.3 rebounds, you think it'll help? I'm like, hell yeah, like, you're going to take it. So, I mean, 
but it's just like you see it so much now. I mean, even in like the last year's draft, like you had like a lot of kids that came out early and it was like in you know late first round and they sitting back in the green room and they sweating bullets because you know they haven't heard their name called and they're trying to make phone calls to these teams and like this and that stuff. And no, it's now you sit so hard. Yeah, it's not looking so hard. And you like, dude, you still had a legit three years of eligibility left. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So now you're gonna have to like. If it don't work out here, you like you say, you got to try to get the deal and you can go overseas or something like that. I hope you can get into the league to go back to work. Well, you probably could have just took like another year. You're like, your game could have doubled so much in a year or so. Yeah. And prior to that, remember Kenny won at Cincinnati? Yeah. From like his sophomore year to his junior year, his like, you know, his junior year, senior one, like the dude turned into a monster literally over and off season. You get what I'm saying? So your game can change a lot in a year. It's just like, like I said, the NBA ain't going nowhere. Like, let it develop, you know what I'm saying? I feel like in the NBA now, you have too many, you have too many work projects. Nah, you know, too many projects, yeah. Too many projects, you know, they're just sitting on the bench. And, you know, they're going to be picking up another year or two, another year or two, depending on being there. Well, you got a guy that came out there as a junior that y'all don't even take a look at. And, you know what I'm saying? You probably wouldn't even have to go through this process for him. True. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. get some time to actually develop himself. <clears throat> and, uh... The next guy we're going to look at his name is Justin Jackson. Played for North Carolina. He averaged 18.3 points, 4.7 boards, 2.8 assists. He's a third-year guy, so he's got the most experience of the of the three guys we're going to talk about. On paper, he seems like he's got the best potential because he's a third-year guy. You know, he's got a chance to hone his skills and get into know his his uh, style of play. But at the same time, does him being there for three years raise any question marks? What question? About why it. not go earlier? But like, but why? Yeah, I mean that's the thing about it. Like you go when you feel like you're ready to go. Like you know what I'm saying? You feel like okay, I'm ready to make this move. Then you make the move. If not, then don't. You know, it's just it's just that simple. Like a lot of people try to have like it's a big difference between a one and done and a guy that's been there four years. It's only a three year difference. You know, one and done, you're gonna hit college at like 18. You're gonna turn like 19 over that year. Mm-hmm. When you're done with your same year, you're like 22. So, yeah, it's not that much of a difference, what, really. Like, what, it's only a couple of years different. So, like, and you got a degree out of it, yeah, too. so, I mean, for them to act like, all right, he stays in college for three years. <laughs> he stays in college for three years. It's such a bad thing. Like, the dude averaged 18 in the ACC. Which is With North Carolina, yeah, it's no joke. Of, that, it's not a joke conference, right? It's not a pushover conference. So, you know, obviously he can play. And if they look at his stats, he probably progressed every year since his freshman year. Number-wise and stuff, percentage-wise and everything mm-hmm. else. So, uh, I don't know why he would, you know, not really be in the, you know, at least near first round. Really True. Really that much. And the next guy is John Collins. Played for Wake Forest. He's 6'10", 235. He's a small forward, power forward. I think he's more of a power forward center. Oh, no, sorry. John Collins is a small uh, power forward center. Justin Jackson was a small forward. John Collins is from Wake Forest. He averaged 19.2 points. Almost 10 point uh, rebounds, 1.6 blocks a game. He's a solid energy guy. 63% of his shots were taken in the paint. So you kind of know what you're going to get from him there. He's not going to be stepping out too much and hitting jump shots. He's just going to be a great energy and role guy for you. Uh, I think he looked okay. Yeah, from what I saw, he looked, you know, all right. But it's just, you, you wonder what it'll be like against that elite competition. Um, those roles that we get in this and, you know, whatnot, does that happen? Um, but you can't argue with 19 and 10. That's for 20 and 10. Yeah, you, true. You, you can't argue with that. You know, and we said earlier, you know, he seems to be a guy that knows what he's got to do. So, you know, it's just, I, I think out of the three, numbers wise, um, he would probably. He, he seems to be the one that could help the best because he's mobile, he can play center. Him and Ibaka look like they could do something together. Yeah, I think that if the Raptors were to take him out, since then, I'm sorry, like, I just, you know, was given props because I'm not discrediting anything, but, you know, you have your hands kind of full on that perimeter anyway with, with, uh, with P.J. Tucker and Lamar Carroll. Hopefully so, you can so try to get him. another three. Go get another three guy that's got to find his niche, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and don't forget the ball throw. Yeah, and all over, so it's like, you know, get your three, because you don't really have that, you know, legit one that you can put in there and, you know, give me something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you put him in and you have a real good one out of every six games and he's just very active on the board and stuff. But the minute you drop that against the 
Because every time y'all play against like Jamar and stuff, and like aggressive big men, like y'all struggle like, like crazy, right? So it's like you have to. And Andre it. Drummond's on the board for some reason. He's on the trade block. Same with Reggie Jackson. So the Raptors could potentially. No, uh, that's a lot of money. But I don't know. Yeah, Drummond just signed like hundred like a max deal. Like yeah. Plus on top of your one forty, which which gave the rolls. I mean, you still got that sixty on the books that you get him for more than ten hundred dollars too. His last year's a team option, so that's the yeah. only and prime benefit have, there. Yeah, and then you know if you're trying to get Serge Ibaka, yeah, it's not going to be cheap. Be, yeah, it's not going to be cheap. Man. Like I don't want to wait. <laughs> I would be right there with the Cavs and payroll. Huh? Third pay option. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So then I guess of the two options of trading him, trading the pick or keeping the pick, what would you think? Honestly, uh, if you're just looking to try to draw, like trade the pick, like probably go after the winning player. Yeah. I would probably go after the winning player and try to trade for like a, a more seasoned winning player. Like I said, me, I think y'all should by any means try to go after Wilson Chandler. That's just me. Yeah, no, you've like, been a fan of him for a while. Think y'all should try to go after him, and at least you have another winning player to try to put. Him and PJ Tucker player. would be yeah, good. Try to put him because they both play deep. You know, yeah. they can both play deep, they can both knock down shots. With some time, was a little better creating his shot, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, but, yeah, you got to get something because to try to draft a big and then try to, like, let's say if you did have Delta in mind, try to sell a big for him, but it's just got a big who was playing well for him. Mm-hmm. You know, so they like, uh, you know, I don't know, a big kind of thing. You still got Fareed up out there. True. You know, so yeah, they are stacked at the four yeah, position. Yeah, so like that four or five spot, they kind of, they look good. So you have to, like, put something out there that's complete. But that's only if. Yeah, I hope hope they do something right with it. The John Collins fella seems like he could do some real work for us. I think he could help us out a lot. Jakob Pertl, hopefully he turns into something special, but I don't know what I don't know what to score. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hopefully he'll do well with seven. Uh just to wrap it up soon, we're gonna we're almost done here. Uh Seattle is getting a renovation on it. Yeah, the key arena. They're in the former uh, president of basketball operations, Tim Lyowick, he is there's two major companies doing it. I guess he's one of the head of the one company. They're going to try and renovate the arena. So does that is that a step in the right direction to try and bring back the Seattle Supersonics? Yeah, or? yeah because right in the Pacific Northwest, you had that was them in Portland, right? Mm-hmm. It's like right there, man. People love They love the Sonics, man. Like, if Seattle comes back, there's no team in Vancouver, then. Yeah. It just won't. Best option would be in Montreal, then, right? Mm-hmm. For an expansion team? Mm-hmm. Just one in Toronto. Well, that's it. It. well, what about Ottawa? Really? I don't know. Like, I, I mean, uh, like, what's there's like nothing to do in Ottawa. Ottawa. That's the big thing for the Senators. Oh, they're, like, they're right off the highway. Is where, like, the, where the arena is built is really cool because yeah, it's not I've, cool I've because it's arena, easy to yeah, get to. Yeah, I've been there, man. Well, been there but, like, there's nothing there. much to really do. Also, it's not Ottawa. Like, I don't know. You said Montreal? Yeah, Montreal because it's got to happen. Life, it's got some fun times to it. Yeah, it's mean, colder there, but yeah, it, it, yeah, it can't be no problem with Minnesota. It's <laughs> about the same, yeah. So it's just I just I doubt it though. I just I think Toronto will be the only team for yeah. a while. Well, I think I mean I think it will be like yeah in Canada. And I mean if, if you say okay Vancouver or Seattle, well, gotta go with Seattle. Then, yeah, Canada this year is in a better, way better history. Like, people way people jump up they wait for it. They miss the back. team. Yeah, they miss the team. Yeah, right. So. I think that would be the move. Yeah, true. Yeah, Montreal would be okay, but yeah, it's, yeah, I just don't see it. Um, yeah, so that's about it, Elvin. What do you think? What do you think's gonna happen for Game Four? Uh, all right, I'm gonna say Game Four. We're gonna come out to Seattle, come out to the Heat, and I think they'll pull it out. You think they're gonna get one? I think they'll get one. It'll be a gentleman sweep. Yeah, I think they'll get one just off of Game Four. They gotta get one. Uh, I hope so. It, need to get something going on. Like we were talking about earlier, they need to take it one quarter at a time and just go from there. Go from there. Um, do you have any shout-outs? Anyone want to say hey, what's up to you? No, no, no. Just, we'll get to the whole shout-out part eventually. Yeah, we'll get to the whole shout-out Uh, yeah, shout-out to my mom. Hi, mom. Um, and to my friend Mike and my friend Charlie. What's going on? And yeah, that's it. Our podcast is brought to you by Double E Productions. We are in association with Gizmo TV, and we are... Happy to be sponsored by Perennial Landscaping. <coughs> Ew.
if you have any further questions, please contact us. You can comment on the YouTube page, or you can contact myself on Facebook at Ethan Ziltner, Z-I-L-T-E-M-E-R, at Facebook. Or you can contact Elvin, and yeah, have a nice day, everybody. Uh -huh. And that one was a lot better.